All right, guys, let's get started, Marissa, with some of uh, the web app stuff. Pretty simple PHP-based website. So this should be a server that should give you um, a good try at some basics at web stuff. I mean, if you've got, you know, web scanning tools that you want to run, you can run those tools against it. So let's start with sectools.org. So we'll go to sectools.org and let's see what we got out there. So you want to go against a web server of some kind, right? If it were me, I got a feeling that you probably don't need a sniffer. You might be able to use Metasploit, but Metasploit's focus is really, really for system exploitation, not really web app exploitation. I could see going for Nessus. Matter of fact, I'll go for Nessus. So I'll fire up my Nessus box. I've got a little handy dandy Nessus box. And you can run Nessus for free, which is what I'm doing. Right, so I've got a free version I'm gonna use right here. And I'll do a quick new scan. Now let's see. We probably wanna do a basic network scan. Now if it were me, I'd really like to try for web application test. So I'll do both. How about, okay, so we'll say that this is a basic network scan against this host, right? Okay, now in here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna throw in the IP. It won't take a web address, so it won't take a URL. It just takes a IP address or a range, okay? So looks like it's just gonna be a regular scan. I'm not gonna throw any real specific stuff in here. Uh, plugins are gonna be all of them. Unless you do an advanced scan, you cannot do um, only use this plugin, only use that plugin. Now, in, if we're doing some network testing, I'd really spend a lot of time doing that. All right, so for discovery stuff, it's gonna be pretty common. Assessment stuff is gonna be Let's do quick. Okay, so under assessment, I did quick web app stuff. Okay, let's jump over. Let's see the report. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so let's launch that bad boy with some generic web test. So if it were me, this would probably be the thing that I would go after. Um, since it's a web app, I will tell you this, right? When I'm, when I'm doing external pen tests today, you know, the overwhelming majority of the time, they're web app engagements. So the, the bulk of the stuff I'm doing today is web app stuff. So let's jump down here and let's kick off another one as well. And I'll do a web app one. Okay, and I'm gonna do is verbose web app scan against this address, okay? All right, now it's probably gonna just want the IP address in there. So I'll throw that in there like that. And we'll do the same thing here, right? So under the assessment section, right, you see how it's got for uh, quick? I'm gonna set it to complex. Right, so he's gonna try all the generic stuff. All right, and then I'm gonna light it up. Okay. And launch. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here to my basic network scan and let's see if we got any data on it right now. Right now, not looking like much. Not really looking like much, okay? And you'll see right now it's looking for vulnerabilities in my environment. Looks like I've got some weak SSH stuff enabled. Looks like I gotta fix that. I'll jump over to my scans to check my web app scan, see if I found anything. No, nope, not look like much right now. You know, looks like it'll probably turn up more on the network scan. 
Ah, uh, web application vulnerable to clickjacking. We'll have to see about that, huh? Okay. Okay, well, that's fair. All right. Pages don't use any type of clickjacking mitigation. All right. All right. So as you go through each of the web pages, there's basically no anti-cross-site scripting, anti-click jacking. There's none of those default features are enabled on the server itself. So someone potentially could automate execution through the website, right? Someone could point links from my website or to my website and coerce a user to maliciously utilize my website. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. But you notice that vulnerability is classified as a medium. So it's probably going to need to have an actual cross-site scripting or an actual vulnerability that can be exploited uh, before we'll call that one legit, right? But not bad. Okay. All right. So right here it says PHP. Uh, expose PHP information disclosure. Okay, and it's looking like it's using what's called a PHP egg. Okay, so these are PHP Easter eggs. That's what these are. So what's happening is PHP Easter eggs are things that you can put at the end of a web request. You can do like this with these numbers. And if it responds to these numbers, you can figure out what version of software, what version of PHP the server is running. So do you see how what Nessus tried was he was like, you know what, let me add question mark PHP be one of these numbers. And he got a response back that helped him figure out what version of software I'm running. We call that a PHP Easter egg. Okay. Okay, so that's a good little find. All right, and this shows you how to fix it. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so basically here's what's going on. When you do that in the HTTP header, they can see what version of PHP you're running. What they want you to do is you should be able to get the server info, but you should not see the PHP info right after it, right? That's what they're trying to show you how to do. So you shouldn't be able to figure out what version of PHP your server's running. Okay, again, not necessarily exploitable, but it's like information disclosure. It allows the attacker to figure out like, oh, he's running this and it might be vulnerable. Okay, all right, let's see what else we got. Looks like we got some browsable web directories. I definitely got that. Track and trace method enabled. Oh, definitely, definitely good. All right, so if coupled with another vulnerability like cross-site scripting, uh, then track and trace become very, very interesting, okay? Again, what I would say to a customer if they had this kind of stuff, it's more system configuration stuff. They could just do some PHP hardening and clean this stuff up. That's why all of these are mediums. All of these are mediums. None of them so far has been a high or critical. None of them so far has been a high or a critical. Almost everything is some sort of system configuration, system hardening type thing that needs to be done. So let's see. Uh-oh. Much like trouble. Okay, the remote web server hosts CGI scripts that fail to adequately sanitize requests with malicious strings. All right, so if we look, this is what he sent. And now in the output, he got HTML output. That's what, he's, that's what he's talking about. So when he sent this to the server, he got HTML output. So that means the server returned executable code. Okay, Houston, that could be a problem. 
All right, so what I would say for vulnerabilities like this is, although that's interesting, my guess is probably possible. I would try one other thing. So I'm going to throw this in here. I'm going to see what it does and see if it's vulnerable for me. Okay. All right. So it just shows up right here. Now what I would try to do is that doesn't to me necessarily mean it's vulnerable. Right? Might be. That doesn't necessarily mean it's vulnerable. So let's try. See what that does. Uh oh. All right. Now that was leaning toward exactly what I was going to say. Now check out what he says. Chrome detected this, and they've got a cross site scripting editor incorporated into the browser. So, one of the things that I would say with these types of attacks is to try to do them with a different browser. I try to do stuff like this with Firefox. And of course, I don't have Firefox installed on this laptop. The reason I try to do this kind of stuff with Firefox is because Internet Explorer and Chrome have these anti cross site scripting libraries that, that are constantly being updated. So when you're testing for cross site scripting, you don't know if the server's blocking it or not, right? And if you're testing for code injection, you know, your browser might, might actually be stopping this stuff. So those types of vulnerabilities are heavily, heavily, heavily dependent upon the browser trying to render them. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, says hi. Uh-oh. Now let's see what we got. Now it says SQL injection, message box, foo, window.alert bar. Really? Let's see. Hmm. Huh. I definitely did do SQL injection. I don't know if I would have did it that way, but look what he found. You have an error, what? In your SQL syntax. Definitely not the way to exploit it though. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I really want to get people to start using the channel, start hanging out on InfoSecAddicts.com and hang out on the InfoSec Addicts YouTube channel. Thanks so much. See you again in our next video.